Uh, for a closer look at the lingering effects of Hurricane Matthew in Haiti, we're going to go straight to the source. I'm joined by Alexis Massarelli. He is in Port-au-Prince. He's a communication officer at the UN's World Food Program, which, of course, focuses on fighting global hunger. We want to thank you for joining us by phone. And let me get your sense. I'm told you're, you're learning a lot more about these uh, the worst affected regions. Give us an overview, if you can, of what, what you're seeing there in Haiti right now. Well, we know that you know hundreds of people have been killed. There's been uh, extensive flooding, the mudslides. There's been very huge damage to all kinds of infrastructure, to roads, to buildings, and there also electricity and water shortages. Uh, there's been a huge loss of crops as well, and we don't know what the next harvest will be. So, at the moment, what we do uh, together with the uh, uh, Haitian government, with the local authorities on the ground, with our partners as well, is to try to. Uh, assess the situation uh, all across the southern area to assess the damage, to assess the need, and how we can assess uh, the people affected. We estimate that there's about 300,000 people who are currently in need of uh, immediate uh, humanitarian assistance. The big question, as you said, how? Because given a poor infrastructure in a poor country, it was already tough uh, to get aid to these affected areas, I would think. This just makes it that much tougher, doesn't it? Yeah, indeed, and some of the towns we've been reported have been flattened, literally, uh, at sometimes 80% uh, destroyed. And as you know, there's been uh, extensive damage to the roads. And to carry that food, uh, it has to be on big trucks that can carry 10, uh, 20, 25 tons of food. So we're looking at also uh, alternatives to reach these people uh, quickly, because if there is some kind of food now, very soon uh, it will run out. So to reach them uh, uh, by air, uh, or by sea. There, there are so many hurdles that we have to work around to, to bring that assistance. And Alexis, uh, Jim just brought up a, a point. This is a country that's been beset by a cholera epidemic it, it, with an already faulty or substandard sanitation system in the best of times. What are we looking at there? And, and is there a fear on your part that it will spread? And what are some of the other threats that uh, you can see as this situation continues to develop? I mean, obviously, it's not a situation that will disappear in the next few days. Uh, the, the, the level of damage means that we're here for, for weeks and months. And, and obviously, at the World Food Program, we look at, at the food security of these people and to make sure they have enough to eat. But uh, we also have to look in terms of medical need, at medical kit, at the clean water and sanitation. Talk to me about your efforts, because it seems like in recent years it's been an unrelenting demand on the WFP to respond to a series of emergencies from responding to the Ebola crisis, natural disasters, several wars. I know that you've had your hands full. Um, is this the new normal, and how do you deal with that? Well, obviously, we have to work with partners. We don't work alone. So at the moment, we obviously working with the main partner, which is the Haitian government, but also all the donors. Uh, that are uh, traditional, uh, traditionally helping us, not just in Haiti, but around the world. And uh, we are meeting them uh, now as it, as it goes and uh, meeting the various embassies here in, uh, in, uh, in Haiti, but also at headquarters level trying to, to gather funds that will uh, help us for the next weeks and months to come. Alexis, thanks so much for joining us on the phone. I know you're busy there, so we'll let you go. Appreciate it.